Hello, so I'm going to show you a few video clips still from the end of the holidays and a few new photos and just some thoughts about trusting God and trusting God to provide and then I think new, I don't feel like I really have anything new to share this week but these are things that I keep reminding myself of and are things that we need to keep remembering so I'm going to share them. Today is Saturday and we're having a whole morning of baking. Esther, what are you making? Lots of interesting things with pastry and apple. What are you doing, Ned? Play-Doh. What are you making, Joe? Um, this cheese turmeric because I don't want to bother the cut up from the apple. So I'm making a cheese one. Oh, and what have you made over there? Um, I, I cut out and then I put cheese on for flavouring. What is it the shape of? Thank you. Yeah, what are the other things? They're just like bags and sacksfuls of cheese. Mmm, yum. And I'm making caramel biscuits. There's two trays in the oven and I'm going to make some chocolate brownie cookies too. Hannah, what are you making? Potato fritters. Potato fritters, one of the good ways to use up mashed potato. Oh, Daisy! No, Martin! No, Martin! No, Martin! No, Martin! No, Martin! No, Martin! No, Trusting God to provide, there are many different things that we can have to trust God for. There's, you know, all different things, not just one type of need. So you can apply it to whatever your needs are. But the first one is, we have to wait until the right time. So God has a completely different time and schedule to us. And, yeah, his timing is different to us. So sometimes we may need to wait, and it might seem like he's too late, but... In his timing, he's right on time, so we need to trust God's timing. And yeah, be patient and trust that his timing is best. And yeah, often his timing can be very last minute, and that makes it hard to trust. And number two, um, whatever it is that we need, needs to be in God's will. We need to be surrendered to God and obedient to Him and we need to seek what God's will is in the matter and if what we want or what we're, well, whatever it is, if it's in God's will, then we can pray with confidence that He will supply that need. So we can only be confident that God will provide it if it is in, you know, if it's what He wants. And that was one thing I learned from George Miller whenever he was well, you know, wanting to do something new, he always first of all prayed about whether it was God's will or not before he prayed for God to meet that need. So it needs to be in God's will what we are praying for. Number three is the answer will probably be different than what we expect, so expect to be surprised. God often does things so differently than the way that we expect. And number four is we need to be obedient to whatever he tells us to do. So in the story of the wedding at Cana, the people there had a problem, they didn't have any wine, and Jesus and they came, Mary came to Jesus about it, and then she told them, do whatever he tells you to do. And often what God tells us to do doesn't always make a whole lot of sense, but we have to obey, and then he will provide. So we have to be obedient. And number five is, 
God has promised to supply our needs. So the verse where it says, My God shall supply all your needs according to his riches and glory, it says needs, not greed. So not just the things that we want. So he promises to meet our needs. And he knows better than we do what our needs are. There's a verse that says, Your Father knoweth that you have need of these things. So he knows the things that we have need of and the things that we don't, that we might think we do. So we can trust God to provide what we need, but it might not always be what we think that we need. And number six is God wants to use what we have. So in the the widow with the pots of oil, the, the prophet said to the lady, what do you have in your house? And she said, oh, I have nothing except for a little pot of oil. And God wanted to use that little pot of oil that she had. It seemed so in, insignificant, it seemed like nothing. And so we shouldn't underestimate what God can do with the, the little things. Um, so yeah, she thought she had nothing, but she had what God wanted to use. And so we need to give everything we have to God, no matter how little and insignificant it seems. Take the little opportunities. Give God the little bit of money we have, or the little bit of time, or the little bit of energy, or the little bit of talent that we have. Because he wants to use what we have even when it seems like nothing. Number seven is, we have to sacrifice first. Like the widow of Zarephath, first of all, she had to sacrifice and give to Elijah, and then God kept his promise and kept um, giving her what she needed. But first of all, she had to kind of like take a risk. And the widow with the pots of oil, she had to pour out that oil. The oil wasn't all provided first. She had to obey first. Um, number eight is just to trust God. This is something I have to keep reminding myself too. And God is a personal God who cares for our personal needs. Sometimes that seems too good to be true, that God cares about our personal needs when there are so many people in the world to take care of. And also he's faithful to his promises so we can trust him personally for our needs. Um, there's a video I watched this last week when I was having a rest from being busy um, and it was called A Sudden Change and it's about God providing as well. So I will link that down below if I enjoyed it.